What's up everyone, Lakonde Mwila here, back with another video, and we're talking K8. Hey, hey, we know, just like, just move on already. What he said. In this video, I'm going to be talking about one of the more popular tools in the cloud native space, none other than Argo. And based on a recent CNCF survey, Argo has continued to experience rapid adoption, and I'm not surprised. I've had the opportunity of actually working with it in an enterprise setting, and it's certainly an excellent tool. Also, I don't have to keep my ear on the ground much to know what's happening in this ecosystem because one of my friends is a huge fan, and he's always raving about this GitOps tool. Now, more specifically, I'll talk to you about Argo's architecture, how it works, how to install it, adding of clusters, and we'll wrap up with a basic demonstration. If you're interested in a more real-world CI-CD pipeline demo, you can have a look at one of my other videos, but in that one, I use Fleet instead of Argo. As usual, feel free to skip ahead to the parts that interest you the most. We'll start off by talking about two fundamental concepts in Argo, an application and a project. An application in Argo defines the source and destination for your Kubernetes resources, the source being the location in a Git repository where your K8's resource manifests live, and the destination being the location where these resources should be deployed in the target cluster. Now, your source can be raw manifests, Helm charts, or customized overlays. The destination is the configuration that defines where you want your resources to end up. So it specifies the target cluster's API server URL and the relevant namespace. Now, the API server URL is for Argo to know where to deploy the resources from the source, and the namespace is so that Argo knows where these resources should actually live in the target cluster. In a nutshell, an Argo application connects a space within your target Kubernetes cluster with the declarations of your desired state in a Git repository. So what happens when you have multiple applications, related and unrelated applications? What's the best way of actually managing that? And that's where projects comes in. A project in Argo allows you to group applications, which is a great way of isolating unrelated workloads and teams so that you can have optimal multi-tenant environments in your clusters. Projects also allow you to apply fine-grained access control so that only the relevant people and applications have access to carry out various cluster operations. Next, we're going to consider Argo's architecture and how it manages to accomplish all this cool stuff that we're talking about. Everything happens in three steps or phases. Retrieve, reconcile, and present. Each one of these has a dedicated component in the Argo architecture that is responsible for handling the underlying tasks of the respective phase. Let's talk a bit about each of these different phases and the responsible components. We'll start off with retrieve. The retrieve phase, as the name implies, clones the source repository and optimizes things by caching this in local storage. So whether you have raw manifests, Helm charts, or customized config files, this is where interaction with those sources happens. And the responsible component is the Argo CD repo server. Next phase is the reconcile phase. And this is probably the most complex and where a lot of the heavy lifting takes place. This phase compares the resources fetched by the Argo CD repo server and the live manifests that reflect the current state of the target cluster. The responsible component will then go on to reconcile the differences and any deviations to ensure that the cluster's state matches the desired state. And the Argo CD application controller is what is responsible for handling this. Lastly, we have the present phase, which is what end users see when interacting with the Argo UI. It's managed by the Argo CD server, which is a stateless web app that presents the results of the reconciliation phase. Next up, I'm going to show you a demonstration carrying out different steps that I mentioned earlier on in the introduction. As you can see, I have three EKS clusters, Argo, Beta, and Charlie. One is for my Argo installation, and the other two are going to be my target clusters. I'll create two applications that will live inside a single project in Argo. And once these applications have successfully been created, the app controller will deploy the resources in my Git repo to the correct destination. Now, to start off, I will go ahead with the installation process. So I'm going to switch over to my terminal. First thing to do is to create the relevant namespace inside of the cluster. So my namespace has been created. And once I'm done with that, I now need to apply the relevant resources. As you can see, I've already run this previously. All right. 
right, and so just to verify that I've got all the relevant resources installed, I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna open up CanINS just so I can have some visibility of what's going on inside of my cluster. And that's the services, which is good. I still see the relevant components that I need to see. I'm gonna switch over to see the pods as well. And there we go. Everything is running as expected. As you can see, I've now got Argo installed and up and running and I'm accessing it through the uh, relevant host name for the load balancer that was created inside of AWS. And the default username is admin, but in order for you to get the password, you'll have to fetch this from a secret. And so I'm gonna head over to terminal. And there you go. I'm now uh, signed into Argo. And um, in order for you to change the password, which is uh, definitely something that you should do, I'm just gonna head back to the terminal over here and show you how to carry that out. I'm also gonna log in using the CLI tool. And now I wanna actually make sure I'm using the correct host name. Next up, I wanna add uh, clusters to Argo. And so to carry that out, you can first get the context that you actually have available to you. And so you see that I've got a couple of different ones over there. So what I'm gonna do next is then simply run Argo CD cluster add. And I know I wanna add Beta and Charlie. So that's actually perfectly fine. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other cluster. And as you can see, I've got the two clusters that have now been added over here. So the next thing that I'm going to do is to create a project. And very important over here as well, this is um, where you can start to define some of the access control for your projects as well. In my case, I just wanna make sure that I do allow for um, any source uh, to be added, hence the asterisk over there, and I'm going to save that. 
and the same thing for the destinations as well. And you could obviously get a lot more specific, but I'm going to save that. And uh, bear in mind that you definitely want to follow um, fine-grained access control when you're actually doing this in place. So I'm just carrying out these steps just for demonstrative purposes. And the same thing for the resources that can be in, um, installed. So I'm going to add the resource allow list, and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the namespaces as well. And I'm going to save that. And once I'm done with that, the next thing is to actually proceed to create applications. So my applications are successfully synced and are healthy and the health and sync statuses answer the two very important questions when it comes to your application, which is, is your application working and is it running what is expected? So that means that um, all of the resources that are declared inside of our source repository have successfully been deployed to our target cluster and are running as expected. So I have clicked on one of the applications. I'm currently looking at the Express backend prod and all of the resources that have been created here are the same ones that I have inside of my source repository. I'm going to start off by just showing you that so you can see the declarations. I have my deployment manifest a network policy, uh, RBAC definitions for a role and uh, role binding, um, a service to expose my application and a service account as well. And so if I come over here, uh, you'll notice that I've got each of these resources that has been created and they're reflected and you can see the statuses for each one of them. So the last thing to just show you is the load balancer endpoint or the domain names for the respective services so we can actually see that our application is working. So this is prod and this is stage. And because this is all happening inside of the, an AWS environment, I can easily get the relevant domain names uh, from the EC2 service um, inside AWS. And so when I go to the relevant host names, you'll see over here that I am actually able to access my application through the test endpoint. Thanks a lot for watching. If you found that helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more content.